Greetings, friends. Welcome to today's devotional, Psalm 53. Fools say in their heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They commit abominable acts. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They've all fallen away. They are all alike, perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, those evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon God? There, the, there they shall be in great terror, in terror such as has not been. For God will scatter the bones of the ungodly, and they will be put to shame, for God has rejected them. Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion, when God restores the fortunes of his people. Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. So one could easily get the sense by reading the Psalms, as we have for quite a few weeks now, um, and a lot of it is is the crying out of the psalmist for judgment against the ungodly and the wicked. And quite often there is assurance that the, the ungodly and the wicked will be judged and they will face great terrors, much like we read in this psalm. And it's easy, as I started this, to, to, to get the impression that God somehow revels uh, or enjoys the idea of judging people and finding them to be wicked for those who don't believe uh, in him or don't follow his ways. It's always been that way in our world since the uh, very beginning of time. There's always been people who have rejected God. Even um, Adam and Eve's own son rejected God when he killed his brother. Uh, and the first murder was recorded in scripture. So it's always been that way that the human heart is corrupted by sin. And there are always going to be those people that turn away from God. And of course, reading the Old Testament, there's a lot of destruction and judgment. And a lot of things that God does um, that to, to smite people who are the enemies of Israel. And it's a hard thing for us to... Um, hard thing for us to, to connect with uh, the way we feel about God based on the New Testament and based on what Jesus did but, did. but I think, I mean, it's truly the real nature of who God is. I don't think there's suddenly a change in God that he changed his mind and decided that I can't deal with the sin of people anymore, so I must do something. Uh, in the Old Testament, in the way that ju God judged people, they were uh, all enemies of his very own people, and they oppressed and fought against and destroyed and, and did terrible things to the people of Israel. And when God punished his own people, it's because they broke the covenant. I mean, ultimately, God is just, um, God is righteous, and God is holy. And he can't bear to be in the presence of or have a people following him that are not so. And so judgment was always going to be a part of God. And it's still the same in the New Testament as well, that those who reject Jesus uh, will one day face judgment. But that does not make God happy. That does not please God at all. In fact, I think it's quite the opposite. I read in this psalm a bit of heartbreak, uh, that God is heart is broken um, because there are people that reject him. When, he, when, he, when the psalmist writes in God's voice, of, you know, he's looked down from heaven and are there any who do good? And there's none that do good. And just as a parent feels brokenhearted when a child goes astray or disobeys. Yes, there's sometimes anger in us, but we're human. But there's also that sense of disappointment and loss when uh, our children run astray or people reject us. And I feel that this psalm does speak to some degree, and I'm inferring that from the tenderness of God, of who he is. Would God have sent his son? Would God have put on a human flesh and lived like Jesus lived, suffered like he did, died like he did, uh, and faced the humiliation and the injustice that he did. The God of heaven and earth being judged by human beings, would he have done that if he didn't care for all of humanity? The love that he revealed to us through his son and on the cross is a love that is for all people. And the bonus for us is that through that death on the cross, God took care of sin, and so when he looks upon the earth, and, and would God say to himself, there's none on earth that do good? Well, that's to some degree that's true, because our human hearts are corrupted by sin, but because those of us who believe are covered by the sacrifice of Christ, he sees us as perfect and spotless in every way. Uh, there's no fault in us whatsoever, that we are 
um, holy and righteous and a reflection of his holiness and righteousness to the world. And that is a, a remarkable and amazing concept and idea for us to think of about how great and how un unbelievable God's love uh, is and was for us. And it was revealed to us through human history. So uh, don't get the impression that uh, there are two different gods in the Old and New Testament, one judgmental and wrathful and one loving and peaceful. It is the same God, but circumstances changed once Christ shed his blood for us and for all of humanity. And God sees others that we reject and judge in the same way. And it is um, a privilege for us to be witnesses to that and to be the one, the ones who can uh, sing praises and rejoice in who God is so that others can see and fill God's heart with joy and pleasure when others come to know him uh, because they have seen witness from us. So that's our uh, devotion for today. Rejoice and be glad, brothers and sisters, because uh, you are forgiven and you are holy and perfect. Until tomorrow, when we have Psalm 54, stay safe and be well.